drainage, habitat loss and urban development have all accelerated overland flow and increased flood peaks over the centuries. Climate change is exacerbating the problem and bringing about more extreme events and flooding in the UK is predicted to increase in severity in the future. The traditional way to manage this has always been to build bigger and higher flood defences. However, in recent years, there has been a growing interest in increasing resilience to flooding through the restoration of natural processes, slowing down flows and increasing water storage in the landscape. This is known as natural flood management and Scottish Government have enshrined this concept into the most recent flooding legislation. However, there is a lack of evidence about exactly how much this can contribute and what techniques work best. For this reason, Scottish Government established the Eddleston Water Project in the Scottish Borders near the town of Peebles. It should be noted that natural flood management cannot replace traditional, hard engineering approaches, but it can augment them and increase resilience to flooding. The main aims of the Eddleston Water project are threefold. We wanted to see, first of all, we could reduce flood risks to the communities of Eddleston and Peebles by storing and slowing down flood waters. Secondly, we wanted to see what benefits that would bring about to the wildlife within the catchment. And then finally, we wanted to make sure we could do that working with farm businesses to make sure we're also having a positive impact and not detracting from the important work within the catchment. Tweed Forum is leading the Eddleston Water Project. We're an umbrella body promoting integrated land and water management and we're coordinating the project on behalf of Scottish Government and SEPA, which is the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. There are a host of other characters and organisations involved, such as the Woodland Trust, Forest Carbon, Scottish Natural Heritage, and most important of all, the landowners and farmers themselves. More recently, the Eddleston Water Project has been supported by a North Sea Interreg project called Building with Nature. The reason the Eddleston Water Catchment was chosen is that it has a real flooding problem in both Eddleston Village and Peebles. It has also been substantially modified over time, both in terms of land use change and the significant channelisation throughout most of the main stem. In addition, a wide variety of land uses are represented in the catchment, and it's also a good example of source, pathway, receptor model. In early 2011, a comprehensive monitoring network was installed in the catchment by the University of Dundee. The most important part of the monitoring is the hydrological network. So that's monitoring the level of the rivers and the floods and the flows that go through them. So we get everything from the, the rain coming down, if you like, and then flowing through the system. And then we've got the monitoring that deals with the impact of that water on the hydrology and on the physical structure of the river, and then onto the animals and the plants. So the fish, the invertebrates in particular, and the plants. The aim of the monitoring was to get a good baseline of current conditions before installing measures and natural features. In the meantime, Tweed Forum engaged with all the landowners, farmers and foresters within the catchment to scope out what sort of features and habitats could be restored. In 2013, work began in earnest. Perhaps the highest profile measure has been the re-meandering of the main channel. This was straightened over 200 years ago and there has been very little recovery. So the remeandering took about three years, but you are restricted to the summer months only. And it is a complex process. It involves a lot of earth moving in terms of taking down flood embankments and cutting a new channel and reintroducing the river into it. So in all, on the main stem, we've probably restored about 2.5 kilometres. The majority of the work has happened in the headwaters and the tributaries. The remeandering, whilst it is the sort of showcase of the whole project, is, is one of the smaller elements. At the top of the catchment we have a series of ponds which act to catch the surface water flow and then they fill up and that way you actually hold back um, a large amount of water and clearly the larger the number of ponds the more you can hold back. Now the other thing we have and we've got them around here are these engineered log structures and they try to mimic what happens when a tree falls over as would naturally happen across a river and what happens is you temporarily hold back water. Water still flows underneath it, and critically, fish can get underneath and get through. But as water gradually rises, it's held back, and it floods laterally either side, if you like. And we've got a whole series of these, well over 100, scattered up through these very small upwater streams. 
However, the biggest single measure has been the planting of trees in the headwaters and along watercourses. The headwaters are where floods are generated, where the rainfall falls. The planting of trees helps increase infiltration, slows down overland flow. We've now planted over 200 hectares, mainly in riparian zones, and this will hopefully, in time, because it takes decades, will have an impact on uh, overland flows. The work carried out on the Edelston Water Project has had a dramatic impact on the main stem. The morphology is vastly improved with a far greater range of in-stream and riparian habitats. This has had knock-on implications to the aquatic ecology, with a greater diversity of species reflecting the increased diversity of habitats. However, the measures are yet to be fully tested. One of the things we haven't actually had so far is any big floods. We had uh, some quite interesting ones in 2012, but that was before most of the measures went in. And as a scientist, what I'd quite like to see is um, the testing, if you like, of some of these structures to, to some slightly larger flood flows. One thing we've learnt is that whilst the re-meandering brings a host of ecological benefits and does reconnect the river with its floodplain, it has little effect on delaying the flood peak. The most important finding from the log jams is that uh, where you have a stream with log jams in them, this delays the flood peak going down the system. And that delay can be up to an hour. And that's important because people downstream actually have time to react. And also the peak is slightly lower in terms of the flood. We have also shown that infiltration of rainfall is far more effective under mature native woodland in comparison to sheep graze pasture or even conifer woodland. Thanks to a large number of partners and landowners, the Edelston is now a unique catchment laboratory at both national and indeed international level. It is hoped that the lessons learnt here can inform work elsewhere that will make communities, infrastructure and land more resilient to the flood events of the future.